uh, or also noticeable changes with, with things like freckles and, uh, and or moles. Um, so you can see how these go away very, very simply, easily, and quickly. Down here on the lip is a special one because, again, we have uh, a possibility of the tool picking up part of the lip and blending it into the freckle or, or whatever that is that we want to remove. So again, use as small a brush as possible. Try to pick up the least amount of lip uh, as, as possible here. And go again, just a simple click and, uh, and the changes are made. So very easy to make. These, uh, these minor sorts of changes in that case. You'll also see that we have a hair coming here. It's, it's a little distracting, probably not something we want in, in a portrait. Uh, you can use the makeup, sorry, the, the make over tool blemish fixer to do that. You can also use this thing called the clone tool. The clone tool basically picks up part of the image and makes a copy of it. You've got a lot of uh, variability here on hardness and opacity and all kinds of other things that you can set up. Very, very powerful. If you want to know more about it, go check the help that we have for you online. If you press F1, it'll bring up the help about these types of tools. But go ahead and play with this um, a little bit to see what, it, what the results are going to be like. I simply right click and um, I, I simply right click the area that I want to pick up in relationship to the brush. You'll see a little X there. And then I left click as I want to make an edit. So in this case, I'm simply kind of copying some, some other part of the face uh, over the, uh, the area of the hair. Now you can see that that doesn't always work quite the way you wanted it to. It doesn't blend perfectly. You can always go back over with your your blemish fixer and kind of get a little bit better blending of that as well. So just a little bit clean up on that just by clicking around a little bit. And um, again, you can blemish fix it out um, pretty well and, and, uh, and get a blend in for kind of nicely as well. Down in the lip area, I can actually use the, the, uh, the blemish fixer to kind of fix that. Again, using the smallest tool possible is the best way to do it. Um, I always be able to click, and if I don't like the results, I'm just going to be able to uh, go ahead and undo the last change, and that will uh, that will get rid of that the problem that that I have just created. Uh, so let me get a nice small brush here. I'm going to go in, kind of close on the tooth. Uh, you can see I picked up again just a little bit of that lip. Go to a smaller brush yet, kind of the fine editing area here. So. Just clean clean off some areas uh, just quickly to show you how this works. And we can hide hide that all pretty well. So the hair is basically gone at normal uh, viewing of the photo. Uh, so let's look at a couple of other touch-ups. And that would be our toothbrush. Toothbrush basically takes it to, well, you can see I still have a little bit of the hair in there, but Toothbrush takes, uh, takes the tooth and uh, does a little whitening on it. Uh, I will actually click outside of the tooth to show <laughs> that sometimes you can get an effect that you don't want. That's what undo is for. So just if you pick up a little bit more than you wanted, uh, just go ahead and, and undo and, and uh, you know, be prepared for that sort of thing. We also have a tool called the eyedropper, and this is, well, eyedrop, meaning put, put a little bit of something in there to clean up the the whites of the eyes, and I'll just drop that in there. And again, take a look at what we've done just with a few simple touch-ups. The photo has a nice presence to it and a lot, a lot better look. Let's crop it as well. You can see some uh, clamps in the background and, uh, and uh, where the backdrop is mounted on that particular side. Uh, let's just go ahead and do that. And then maybe one little more touch of contrast and a little bit more brightness very little more brightness. And there you go. And this is probably uh, a great example of something that you can do, um, and, and which, which shows uh, how to take something which is a good photo and make it a great photo. So that uh, being said, um, I just again wanted to, to point out that the Express Lab uh, is existing in other versions of the program. The version that we have here in X3, we have additional tools that we've added. We've added in the, the, the 
local tone mapping. We've added in a couple of others uh, dealing with color balance and that sort of thing. So it's a little more accessible in this version. Again, all of those tools exist in the, in the earlier versions of the program. Local tone mapping is called Clarify, and um, you, can, you can find that in, uh, in the other main full editor at that, uh, in, in earlier versions. But again, we, th we think that this collection of tools is a great starting point for us. Uh, the other tools that we have here are things like digital noise removal to, to clean up any sorts of noise that you may have in a photo, uh, a little sharpen ability, um, and, um, and a few others that, uh, that that we have available for rotation and that sort of thing. Um, by the way, one thing before we leave the portrait photo. Generally, while I promote the idea of using local tone mapping a lot on landscapes and anything with sky, clouds, sand, beach, brick, all of those sorts of things, very interesting look to it. Uh, I will also, in this case, not uh, promote it for portrait photography. Uh, there's a high likelihood that you won't like what uh, what the results is uh, are going to be unless you're going for a very artsy sort of grunge look to uh, to a photo. So uh, let me just show you what that looks like. You can play with it yourself, see if you like it. My my approach is eh, interesting uh, changes to the hair, interesting changes to maybe the the outfit but uh, don't like necessarily what it's doing to skin. Even if I back it off a bit, it, it really, really does a lot of extra contrast. So basically, suggestion is probably not using local tone mapping on people, but uh, give it a try on uh, just about anything else. So that, um, that is the other thing that uh, we'll show there. Let's uh, talk a little bit about... Um, evening out brightness, evening out um, uh, color in a photo. I'm going to go out of the Express Lab at this point, and I'm going to go over and grab maybe a different set of photos. No, nope, that's the same one right here. Here it is. Um, let's grab this beach scene right here. So, again, I'm in the organizer. I've uh, clicked on the photo that I want to do some editing on. I can use the full editor button to go into the full editor or I can just double click on the photo and that'll take me right in. Let's talk about this photo for a second. It's a, an evening beach scene. The sun is just about to set. Uh, I'm actually shooting an 18 millimeter lens off of a tripod on the beach giving a little uh, timed exposure to it to give a, a longer exposure so that the water uh, that, that is receding away down the beach uh, is actually going to have a little bit of a, of a, of a flow look to it. So that, I, I like that. Uh, I was also using what's called a neutral density filter on the front of the camera, and you can see that I picked up the edges of that here. So here I am in the full editor. I've got um, uh, a number of uh, number of ways of uh, of looking at making changes here. I've got this tool palette that if I want to pick up the crop tool, I can do that right from uh, from that tool palette uh, and uh, easily easily go in and do my crop. Uh, you'll see that instead of the the tools coming in on the side, they're actually going to come in up here where I can either do my uh, changes or, or any of the other detail fixes in, in this particular area. So go ahead and just do that crop right there. You'll also see over here that we have the Learning Center. The Learning Center is a powerful way of organizing this for newer users, but also for people who, who use the program on a regular basis and want to go in and just find easy shortcuts to uh, get into an area. So if I want to adjust, it shows here's a bunch of things that you can do to adjust. Uh, here are things that you can do for retouchings and uh, and um, uh, and restoring photos. So you can see a, a number of the tools that just show up over there. Very easy to get get from one point to another. Again, this is a feature that's been uh, in earlier versions. Uh, we've just reorganized it a little bit for the new tools that we have uh, in this version of the program. Uh, so let's let's move on with uh, looking at some retouching that we can do here. So. Um, with the main photo, um, we have, uh, uh, let's, let's look at some of the normal tools that we've used. We've just been using the Smart Photo Fix. We go to the Adjust menu, pull it down. We'll see that Smart Photo Fix there is there as well. 
uh, I can just go ahead and uh, let it uh, 